Republican Party counted more than 180,000 caucus goers, about 60,000 more than That's the previous amazing. record wow. set in 2012. That is, that is I just knew it mattered. The top three finishers last night each received more votes than the previous record set in 2008. Ted Cruz got nearly 52,000 votes, the most ever for a Republican candidate. This is a big t story, too, though. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, out of nowhere, collected the second most ever with over 45,000 finishing with 24 percent. Well, that's, that's, that, that's a Never that, run a campaign. That is a sort of thing, Nicole. And again, so when we're telling people how extraordinary turnout was, that's the sort of thing if you told Trump's campaign people in Iowa, hey, listen, you give me a certain amount of money, I'll guarantee you 45,000 votes. <laughs> You're going to take it. I'll take it because that's a historic number. But again, it goes back to the Cruz turnout machine. Yeah, right? and, and just their confidence in the modeling. I mean, you know, Trump got the turnout he needed. He just didn't have the apparatus in place, and, and he actually ended up splitting. He, you know, he did better among evangelicals than I think even he probably thought he would, but he had to split them with Rubio. The other than Cruz vote was probably split more evenly between him and Rubio than their campaign anticipated. So they got the turnout they needed. They just, I think, had to cipher off more of their support to Rubio than anyone anticipated. Mm. Uh, he did something last night, though, that I bet surprised a lot of people. He made the turn successfully. Agree. Oh, yeah. yeah. He finished yeah. second, but he made that turn successfully oh. like a pro. It was so, humble, so. it was nice, and then I'm going to buy a farm here. It was, you guys, it was what you guys always say. He And, and I think Mark Halpern has said this, that that when he has a setback, the reason he gets sort of gets away with these gaffes that would sort of right. sabotage any other candidacy is because he adjusts like quicker than you can blink and say, like before you could go on TV and say, huge disaster for Trump, uh, he had gone on TV and given the most magnanimous speech of his candidacy uh, uh, Willie, ever. Willie, if you looked at the Twitter feed, the sharks were out, oh, this is oh, army's yeah. going to lose. Of course, Thank you. this was Ted Cruz's home field advantage. I mean, so, but everybody's saying, oh, how's he going to, I mean, this is a guy that get more votes than anybody else in the history of Iowa presidential politics other than Ted Cruz. Okay, you put that on one side, and then on the other side you put the same guy wants nine billion dollars in debt. Like, this guy has been in a hole before, much, much, much deeper than this, and people, even in his loss, people underestimate Donald Trump thinking he's going to go out there and scream. Yeah, well, the question's always been, can he take a punch? What happens if the guy who's been ahead the whole fight suddenly gets knocked down or gets stunned? He took a big punch last night, yeah. and there were a lot of people, as you point out, gleefully predicting that this speech was going to be the beginning of his meltdown. He was going to bark at Iowa. How could you let me down, you losers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was watching to see how he handled it. He went up there. It was concise. He thanked the people of Iowa, and he just said, on to New Hampshire. So